Hello, hello everyone. This is Ziki here and I hope you're all doing very well and I'm back with your daily up and update. All right. So in this video, we're going to be talking about upcoming games. We're also going to look at the results from yesterday, you know, and tonight, which team do you think is going to be eliminated? Because everything is happening tonight. Group A and Group B, the games are going to be played at the same time. Okay. Group A, 7 p.m. I'm talking of South Africa, Zimbabwe time, you know, and then Group B, 10 p.m., we are going to see which team is going home and which team is going to survive to see another round of AFCON 2023. Now, let's get straight into it. Now, the first game that you're going to be seeing, the first group of course is Guinea-Bissau taking on Nigeria and then Equatorial Guinea taking on Ivory Coast. I am telling you that the game that I foresee to be a little bit exciting is the one for Equatorial Guinea and Ivory Coast. Now, let's take a look at the points here. In Group A, we are seeing Equatorial Guinea is the one that is on top with four points, right? And Nigeria coming in second there. Similar points, of course, four points, four points. And then Ivory Coast, for some reason, they slipped. Actually, they started on very well, you know, as the host. They won their first match. And we thought they were going to win their second. Unfortunately, it didn't come out so. So they ended up, you know, losing. Now they are third with three points. And, of course, the struggling Guinea-Bissau is number last today with no points. So which team do you think is going to go home tonight? Okay, which team do you think is going to go home tonight? Because we're going to be seeing Equatorial Guinea, who with who have four points. Now going against the Ivory Coast, who have got three points. I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait. I can't wait anyway. And again, Nigeria coming in there. Of course, in their first match, things did not go the way they would have wanted it to go. You know, if only they had won the first match this time around, they would have been, you know, with the second win that they did, the win that they had. Right now, we should be talking about something else, but unfortunately, it's, it's the game of football. You lose some, you win some, and you draw some. So Nigeria there with four points, very, very good result that they have here. They're sitting at a very, very pretty position. All they need to do is to win or to draw. Then things might go their way, all right? You know, I'm always telling people, like, don't rely on, you know, on being the best runners up and all this kind of stuff. Just win the games, period. With winning, you don't have to worry about anything. Anyway, the next game that we are going to be seeing, of course, is the exciting Group B, where we have kept it. We have already qualified for the round of 16. And by the way, they've already been allocated to the date for their, you know, knockout game. They're going to be uh, playing on the 29th of January. But the team that they're going to be playing against is yet to be decided. So KVD did themselves very, very good there. They did themselves very, very well. And of course, in the same group, we're going to be seeing Egypt. Uh, Egypt is going to be, you know, KVD is going to be taking on Egypt, you know. And then Mozambique is going to be taking on Ghana. Interesting games indeed. Now, when you want to look at KVD and Egypt, you know, a lot of people are like, well, since KVD have won, what if they decide to? I'm like, no. These games are going to be played at the same time. Whatever they might decide to do, whatever they do, we don't know. You know, we cannot speculate or assume things, you know. Because for, for, for all I know, it's very good for KVD to play their best and to collect as many goals as possible. You know, it helps them in their rankings. It also helps them, you know, in international, you know, football, right? So I think they're going to do their best today, all right? Not take away Egypt. Egypt, you know, coming there, sitting at number two, they are, you know, better than others, but they're still all not really out of out 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 you understand what i mean so they need a win because if they win they're going to be second with five points there but if they happen to lose if they happen to lose which means they remain with their two points and in the event that uh maybe ghana or mozambique wins in that group then they might foresee themselves being in some big big problems because if ghana wins they're going to be having four points there they can overtake it or if mozambique wins they can also still go and be on top to be the second on the four points. So whatever Egypt is going to do tonight, they have to win. They have to win to guarantee themselves because they don't need to rely on Ghana and Egypt. To draw. I mean, they don't need to rely on Ghana and Egypt drawing. What if one, one team wins, you know? So every team in Group B has to win, has to win, has to work hard and win. If the West come to the West, a draw is something that Egypt, Ghana, or Mozambique should never even think of. Only COVID are safe to say so. Anyway, let me know which team do you think is going to win. They're now getting on with our stories. Like I said yesterday, we saw some very, very interesting games being played there where we saw South Africa hammering Namibia for nil. 
a lot of talking points there you know people say well there was no way namibia was going to beat south africa in the sense that you know namibian players they play in south africa so they know each other's games and everything and i should also point out that i noticed that you know there was a point like um a what a, a, a namibian circle was just looking at the goal like this he was supposed to just kick the ball i mean straight but imagine he started to look aside looking for uh for for their for their star man what do you call him peter they started to look for peter Peter was, a no, was nowhere to be found because, you know, all the defenders were around Peter. They knew that if they give Peter a chance, he might strike something. So, so everybody was depending on Peter. So Peter wasn't there. All they needed to do was also to try their own luck and also to hit the ball and to kick the ball into target. Instead of looking at the star striker there, I mean, like, honestly speaking, but it is what it is. They were beaten 4-0. That is a convincing result by South Africa there. Okay, now moving again. We saw Zambia drawing with Tanzania, a lot of complaints and also the red card that was given there. Well, Zambians are not very, very happy about it. But even though it, it is the case of a red card and everything, still themselves they didn't play very well. Because if, if ever you have to complain about some, at least score a lot of goals, you know, and then complain about this other particular issue. But if you draw and then you complain, then it's really like a scapegoat. It's like you found an excuse. Okay, this is just what I always take it. It's like you found an excuse. You should have scored goals. That way, even if something would have happened, you would have scored goals. Period. Okay, so they drew there. Zambia won, Tanzania won. Morocco versus uh, DRC. They, you know, they drew again there. One, one there. And then uh, we move on again. We saw um, coach, the coach for Zambia coming out to say, well, I'm just going to quote the bottom, okay? I'm going to quote the bottom there, what he said. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to quote the button. He said, uh, I am disappointed with the result. The red card is very difficult to fight with 10 players, especially when the red card decision seems questionable. But we move on. We can't fight the referee, but continue to fight on the pitch. That's the spirit. Forget about the referee. Forget about the red card. Fight on the pitch. Score goals. Win goals. Otherwise, you are going to find yourself going home, still complaining about the referee. Okay? <laughs> Too many excuses. Too many excuses there, okay? Too many excuses there. So this is all I have for you, my friend. Let me know anyway. I can also say to you, for those people who are confused, like how are they go going to qualify? How many teams are going to come out from each group? I am going to repeat for the fourth time. Guys, each group is going to produce two winners, number one and number two. And then it makes 12 teams to qualify. However, they are supposed to be 16 teams in the round of 16. Therefore, they are going to take the four best paid players, the teams from all these teams. Okay, the 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 best players, uh, the best players, the runners up might come from even one group, depending on how they play. It might come from anywhere. You understand? So they are going to get four paid, best paid players, the teams from this end. They are going to make 16. Okay, so this is just how they are going to go about it. All right. So that is the reason I was saying. People who are saying like, well, some other teams can just rely on, uh, you know, can rely on becoming the second runners. It might not even work like that, okay? It might not even work like that because you're going to find groups, some groups where, let me just give you an example of a group here, like a Angola group, that is group D, where the teams are almost like similar there. So what if, if another team becomes number one and number two and they've got two runners up there because they are the best runners up overall. So it's not even about relying on being the runners up and everything. You just have to score goals and win. Period. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in some very, very bad situation. There. So this is all I have for you in this update, okay? And let me know, like I said, Guinea-Bissau, going to take Nigeria, 7 p.m. Equatorial Guinea, Ivory Coast, 7 p.m. Mozambique, Ghana, 10 p.m. Cap Verde, Egypt, 10 p.m. And speaking of Egypt, you know, Mo Salah, uh, you know, Liverpool, uh, you know, issued a statement there saying that, well, Mo Salah is going to return to Liverpool for him to be, you know, um, attended to on the injury that he has sustained, you know, during the Egypt game, right? So they said, well, he's going to go back to Liverpool for, you know, for treatment of the injury that he, he sustained. Not showing that if he goes, he's going to be able to come back and continue with Afon. I think it depends with how Egypt is going to play tonight. If ever they're going to move on to the round of 16 and then maybe move on to quarterfinals and the semi, you know, you know, maybe he might even be able to come back and join. So it depends with how Egypt is going to play tonight. That is going to be the determining factor again for him if ever he's going to, to return after treatment. And also if the injury itself wasn't very serious. Okay, so this is all I have for you tonight. We're going to be seeing Victor Osimano with his lead team.
Let's see how they go going to play in Nigeria there. Okay, Mara Music. And until I come back again, please subscribe and stay. This is the beautiful game of football, and I love it. I love it. I love how it, everything is going on there. All right. So until then, take care.